If the radicand is not a perfect square, we usually leave it at that. But if you want to estimate its value, what can you do? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hi there, thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If this is the first video you're watching from my channel, I make educational and motivational content. So if you don't want to miss any of my new uploads, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell icon. Now, before we dive into your lesson at today, just a quick little plug. If you want to get one of the shirts, like this one I'm wearing, you'll be extra in a world full of pwede now. You can go and check out linyalinya.ph to get yours. They ship worldwide, so this is the perfect opportunity for those of you who want to represent the team wherever you may be to get one for yourself. Uh, and again, thank you sa Linya Linya for working with me dito. Um, I'm, I'm happy, I'm grateful, and it really is a dream come true. Now that we have that done, let's jump into yung discussion natin today, and I'll see you in a bit. Alright, ito yung lesson natin on finding the square root of imperfect squares or sa totoo lang, pwede natin itong i-rename into estimating the square root of imperfect squares. Napag-usapan natin in an earlier video doon sa types of numbers na ang square root ng mga numbers na hindi perfect square ay tiyatawag nating irrational. Okay? Now, paano natin ito nakukuha lalo na kung wala tayong dalang calculator? Let's uh, look at our options. Pero before we do that, quick review lang nung ano ba yung radicals. Okay? Now, we usually see it like this at meron siyang parts. Yung vinculum, yung line sa taas. We have the radical symbol, which is this, di ba? Yung square root. We have the radicand as yung number na nasa ilalim ng payong na tinatawag natin. And yes, we have a full video lesson nito uh, dito sa taas if you're going to learn how to simplify it or paano yung operation sa addition, subtraction, multiplication, at manami pang iba. Pero ang pinaka kailangan natin matutunan or i-remember ngayon ay kung paano natin ito sinisimplify. Now, dahil ang square root of 4 ay madali with 4 being a perfect square, ang ginagawa lang natin dyan is this, pinafactor lang natin siya. So, ang 4 ay equal sa 2 times 2, okay? At ang sinasabi natin kapag ito ay square root or yung merong 2 dito na nakasulat or kahit hindi siya nakasulat, automatic kasi na square root siya kapag walang nakalagay doon na index number. Titinan lang natin kung ilang pares ang mailalabas natin. At dahil isang pair na yung dalawang 2, pwede natin siyang ilabas. Ang square root of 4 ay 2. This is our answer. Now, kapag naharap tayo sa mga ganitong klaseng problema, katulad ng square root of 12, ang ginagawa natin ay pinafactor pa rin natin siya. Now, dahil hindi ito perfect square, this is how we usually do it. We split it into yung kanyang factors, pwedeng 4 and 3, kasi 4 times 3 is 12. Yung 4, pwede pa nating hatiin sa dalawang 2, so 2 and 2. Pero yung 3, wala na tayong magagawa dyan, prime number na yan. Now, dahil pwede nating ilabas yung pares na 2 sa payong, ang magiging sagot natin ay 2, tapos yung natitirang mag-isa, wala siyang kapares, ay maiiwan sa ilalim ng payong. 2 squared of 3. Pero paano kung ayoko ng ganitong sagot at gusto ko ay yung may decimal? Gusto nating i-estimate siya to the nearest hundredths. Ano ang pwede nating gawin? Now, dahil hindi naman natin pwede i-trial and error ang lahat ng numbers na meron tayo sa buong mundo, dahil sa kulang ito sa time, there are a number of options that you can do. The first one is to use a formula. Now, this is a common formula na ginagamit pagdating sa estimating ng square root of imperfect squares. Yung x is going to be the root of the nearest perfect square. Y is the difference between the radicand and the nearest perfect square. Tapos, if we fill in lang natin yan. Now, kung gagamitin natin yung square root of 12, which is yung uh, ating isolve kanina, titignan natin kung ano yung mga perfect squares na malapit sa kanya. Now, ang pinakamaliit, uh, pinakamalapit na maliit na perfect square would be yung square root of 9, which is 3. Okay? This is smaller than this. At yung kasunod naman niya, kasi kung 3, ang 3 times 3 ay 9, ang Square root of 16 naman ay 4 times itself or 4 times 4. 
Okay? So, the answer has to be between 3 and 4. Kasi ang 12 ay nasa pagitan ng 9 at 16. Na kung gagamitin natin itong formula na ito, pipili lang tayo kung ano yung nearest perfect square na gagamitin natin. Kung ang pipiliin natin ay yung 9, which is mas maliit sa kanya. Sa tingin ko, okay din ito kasi ang gap lang ng 9 at 12 ay 3. Samantalang ang gap ng 12 at 16 ay 4. Pwede nating i-fill in sa x yung 3 which is the root of the nearest perfect square. So this is going to be 3. Okay? Now, dahil ang 12 ay mas mataas kaysa dito sa uh, square root of 9, no? ilalagay natin yung plus sign. So 3 plus, and then you have y, which is the difference between the radicand and the nearest perfect square. 12 ang radicand natin. Ang gap mula sa 9 at 12 ay 3. So yung y natin is going to be 3. That's over 2 times the x, which is, again, the root of the nearest perfect square, 3. So, 2 times 3. Na kung isosolve natin ito, this will be 3 plus 3 over 6, or 3 plus 1 half, or 0 0.5. So, the answer would be 3.5, according to the formula. Na kung gusto ko i-check, pwede kong isolve 3.5 squared or 3.5 times 3.5. This is going to give me 12.25. Now again, fairly reasonable. Malapit na rin naman siya sa 12. Pero kung gusto ko ng mas exact, there is another thing I could do. This is option number 2. We can use estimation. Now, yung estimation works like this. And uh, I, from what I saw sa aking research, ito ay kadalasang ginagamit din sa schools ngayon, if you're following yung modules ninyo, or if you're tutoring your yung anak na sumasagot sa mga modules ng grade 7, uh, ganun, uh, ganito naman yung gagawin natin. Papakita ko sa inyo. Okay? Now, the idea na titingnan natin yung nearest perfect squares is actually the same. Again, the square root of 9, which is 3, ang pinakamalapit sa left side, at yung square root of 16 naman, or 4, ang pinakamalapit sa right side. Now, dahil alam natin na this is 3, and this is 4, alam natin yung 12 should be somewhere in the middle. The next question would be, saan siya mas malapit? Again, na-determine natin kanina, dahil ang gap dito ay 3, ang gap dito ay 4, mas malapit siya sa side na ito. Now, why does that matter? Kasi kung magsisimula tayong manghula, or mag-estimate, nung magiging sagot, we can start with something that is smaller than half. Okay? So, yung sagot natin kanina, which is 3.5, which na-prove na natin is big or um, sumobra kasi siya sa 12.25, alam natin na ang possible reason dyan is kasi hindi naman gitnang gitna ng 9 at 16 yung 12. So, it has to be somewhere here. Now, because of that, we can try yung 3.4 muna. Now, pag sinolve natin yung 3.4 squared or 3.4 times 3.4, ang makukuha natin ay 11.56. Yun lang ang ibig sabihin ng symbol na to, ha? X squared. So again, ito yung hinuhulaan natin or in-estimate natin number. This is going to be the result. 11.56. Now, again, close na siya sa 12. Hindi naman siya sobra sa 12. So we are off to a good start. Kung ang hinahanap ng teacher is the nearest hundreds, okay, isa pa lang ito, so pwede natin siyang dagdagan. Now, this is the part na I'll share yung aking personal na ginagawa. Kapag dating sa ganito, ang una kong sinusubukan ay yung 5, kasi yun yung bandang gitna ng number. So, kung susubukan natin yung 3.45 at isusquare natin siya, 3.45 times 3.45 is going to give us 11.9025. Again, very, very close na siya. Susubukan ko na ngayon na itaas ito ng isang hundredth lang, which is going to be 3.46 to see if lalagpas na siya sa 12. Now, ang 3.46 times 3.46 ay 11.9716. So, hindi pa siya lumalampas. Now, kung push ko siya sa limit niya by 
choosing 3.47, ang lalabas na sa 3.47 times 3.47 ay 12.0409, which is sobra na sa 12. So kung ang hinahanap lang ay nearest hundreds, I can stop right here. 3.46. Now as you can see, ang 11.9716 ay closer kaysa doon sa 12, kaysa doon sa ginamit nating formula kanina. Now, pagdating sa mga worksheets ninyo or sa modules ninyo sa school, okay na yung 3.46 dyan. Now, kung gusto ko naman ng higit pa dyan, maybe to the nearest thousands, ang isasuggest ko na gawin ninyo would be a mix of both. So, we're going to do yung hybrid. I like starting off with the formula kasi it gives you a good look sa kung saan ka magsisimula doon sa numbers na yon. Parang automatic makikita mo na kung ano yung maganda na nearest tenths nung, isong, nung iyong susubukan na square root. For example, again, yung 12, sinubstitute natin kanina, ang kinalabasan nito is 3.5. Now, dahil alam ko na agad na ang 3.5 ay malapit doon sa tamang sagot, at ang 3.5 times 3.5 ay 12.25, doon ko sisimulan yung aking panghuhula. So again, 3.5, ang lalabas ay 12.25. Now dahil sobra siya, instead of trying pa yung 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, o 3.4, ibababa ko na agad sa 3.4 na lang ang susubukan ko. Again, giving us 11.56. So again, yung, yung number of tries natin na babawasan. Tapos, I will try 3.45 which is going to give me 11.9025. Tapos, dahil ito ay bitin pa, ipupush ko siya sa limit to 3.46, which will give me 11.9716. At dahil ang 3.47 ay sobra-sobra na, no? doon sa ating magiging resulta, pwede ko nang silipin ngayon yung 3.465. Now, 3.465 squared is going to give me 12.006. So, sobra na siya. So, ngayon, ibabal, ibababa ko na yung aking hundreds to 3.464. Now, if I get to 3.464, ang magiging resulta niyan, kung isusquare ko ay 11.999, which is super close to 12. So, again, kung nearest thousands, I will get to 3.464. Tapos, ang sinubukan ko lang ay 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, again, uh, babawasan yung steps pagdating sa estimation natin. Okay? So, yun lang yung dahilan kung bakit pagdating dito sa pagsasolve nito, uh, I like using both the formula and then yung trial and error. It's a good way to get to the answer faster kaysa simulan ko sa... 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, 3.4 hanggang makarating ako dun sa number na yon. Okay? But again, depende sa inyo kung saan kayo mas mabilis, saan kayo mas comfortable, yun yung gamitin ninyo. Uh, I'm just making my suggestions kasi lalo na kapag nasa time crunch kayo pagdating sa exams, um, mas maganda if you know where to start. Okay? Now, the best way for you to check if nakuha ninyo is through our quick quiz. So, if you're ready with your pen and paper, your timer starts now. Alright, let's see how you did. So what we have is the square root of 20. Now, ako, again, I use the hybrid method. So let's just do that for now. Kunin natin yung mga malapit na perfect square dito. So ang square root of 20 ay bigger than the square root of 16, which is going to give us the x of 4. Pero mas maliit naman siya sa square root of 25, which is going to give us an x of 5. Now, saan siya mas malapit? Ang gap ng 16 at 20 ay 4. Ang gap ng 20 at 25 ay 5. So ako, mas gusto kong gamitin yung 4 na lang para mas malapit na siya. So isa-substitute lang natin dito sa ating formula. Ang x natin is 4. Tapos gagamitin natin yung plus the 
y, which is 4, over 2 times the x, which is 4 then. So 2 times 4. Okay? So here we have 4 plus 4 over 8 or 4.5. Now, 4.5 times 4.5 is equal to 20.25. So again, in, medyo malapit na siya pero sobra. Kung gusto ko pa na mas malapit, susubukan muna natin yung 4.45. Now, that is going to give us 19.8025. Now, medyo malapit na siya sa 20, hindi na siya lumampas. Kung gusto ko na mas malapit pa, let's try yung 4.46. 4.46 times 4.46 is 19.89. Ang 4.47 naman times 4.47 is 19.98. Ayan, sobrang close na yan at kung... Gagawin, gagawin ko pa yung 4.48, malamang ay lalampas na siya. No? Now, now that we have 4.47, and that is the nearest hundredths naman na din, pwede na tayong mag-stop dyan, no? Kung modules natin yung chinecheck natin. If you want to push the envelope and get to the nearest thousands, subukan natin yung 4.475. 4.475, that's... Uh, kung i-multiply din natin sa 4.475, yan ay magiging 20.025 na or lumampas na siya. Now, dahil yung 4.475 ay magiging 20.025 which is medyo malayo yan sa 20. Malapit na pero 0 0.025 pa eh. Ang target natin maging 0, 0, 0 siya or at least maging 19.999. Subukan natin yung 4.473 Now, 4.473 times 4.473 ay magiging 20.0077 Again, medyo sobra pa. So, kung kailangan kong kumuha ng sagot or pumili ng sagot, I will go with 4.472 which is going to give us, kung isi-square natin siya, 19.998 na napakalapit na sa 20. Okay? So again, if you are going to use the formula, you can get to it faster. Hindi lang ganun ka-perfect yung accuracy. If you're going to use estimation, um, mag-suspend mag ka ng mahabang oras to get to the answer. Pero if you use both, in my opinion, mas mabilis kang makakarating sa tamang sagot. At pwede ka pang umabot dun sa point na you can get to the nearest thousands in the same amount of time. Alright, now I hope you got this correctly. If you didn't, that's okay. I'll be posting more questions on my Instagram account. So if you don't follow me yet, you can follow me at Like Maravilla on Instagram. Check out my Instagram stories for the quick quizzes that I post there. Malalaman nyo right away kung ano yung tamang sagot kasi all you need to do is to tap yung sagot ninyo at lalabas yung tamang sagot. And uh, if you want to see the throwback quick quiz questions naman, you can go and follow us at Team Laika on Instagram. And you can also check out yung page na yun or yung Instagram account na yun for important announcements. If you're on TikTok naman, you can follow me at Team Laika on TikTok for the quick quizzes na iba pa dun sa pinapost ko sa Instagram uh, for the shortcut na mga math tricks at malami pang iba. And if you want to get to know me better, aking personal account naman on TikTok is at Laika Maravilla. That is where I post my mini vlogs, mga challenges, mga skits at malami pang iba. Alright? See you online. Alright, I hope you learned something today. If you did, click thumbs up. Make sure that you share this video with your friends. Sana nakamang exam din sila. Dato yung nasalamit tayong matutulungan. And as always, if you want to reach out to me directly, get the reviewers that I made, join the online or live review events, or mag-request ng mga topics na gusto nyo pag-usapan sa susunod, go and check out www.facebook.com slash teamlaika for more information. Alright? Don't forget to subscribe. Hit that bell icon. We have more videos coming up. I would hate for you to miss those. And as we always say sa channel na to, never stop learning. Adja, adja. Kaya niyan. I'll see you in my next video and bye for now.